Hola, hello, 안녕하세요. Ciao, 다이자오. So, in case you guys don't know, today, the day that you guys are seeing this, is my nine year and six month anniversary on YouTube. <laughs> If you're here, you probably didn't even know that I've been on here for that long because like the earliest video on my channel probably dates back to like seven, eight years ago. Yeah, because I've been posting like completely inconsistently for the past like nine, ten years. Yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up because it was a really random like thing on my timeline. But yeah, that's that, that, that's happening today. So uh, thank you for being here. Today's video is going to be it's going to be a weird one. It's going to be kind of strange, but hear me out. I, I don't know if you're new here. If you are, hi, my name is Leslie. I have like no friends. <laughs> By choice, kind of. I mean, is it a choice if you're psychologically fucked up? The jury's still out on that one. Today's video, as the title suggests, is me talking about my parasocial relationships that I have with um, artists, uh, people that I just like look up to, YouTubers, etc. And let me just add a little disclaimer, okay? I know these people don't know me. I don't exist in their world. I know these people don't know me. I know this is completely one-sided in my head, in my mind. I know I made this all up and this is not an actual reflection of them as a person. This is a reflection of my perception of what they present. But I thought it'd be interesting to just like kind of explain, explore whatever, actually like think about the relationship that I have to these people via the internet because like i've heard a lot of people talking about like oh it's like the internet parasocial relationships sometimes it's unhealthy like you get to the people that are literally like obsessed with people and i've also seen things that it's healthy to have parasocial relationships to a certain extent obviously this is just the conclusion that i have come up with in my mind because obviously like the way that i perceive them is going to be different than the way that everybody else perceives them so yeah this is just okay Yogi Man. Starting off with uh, a YouTuber that I watch casually. Her name is uh, Simply Nessa15. So I have been watching Nessa's videos since 2016 because my stepsister watched her a lot back then and she told me about her and then I started watching her videos and I thought, oh, she's so cool because she's, I believe, like six and a half six seven years older than me which is how much older i am to my sister and i don't have an older sibling i don't know if y'all know this i'm the oldest so i kind of just like check up on her every once in a while I, I i hope she's doing good you know like i just check up on her i watch some of her story times i watch her get ready with me i watch her smoke with me videos things like that because it's just kind of like having like an older sister it's, it's just cool to like watch her and see her develop as a person and I think that's really, it's really cool. Like I get to learn from like the stuff that she's done. I think it's comforting to have somebody like not my age, but just a wee bit older than me that I can just kind of like look up to and just kind of casually follow. So yeah, that's, that's simply Nessa. This next person is DPR Ian, AKA Christian Yu, AKA Rome, AKA um, one of the members from Dream Perfect Regime. In case you don't know who he is, he is a dude who, he used to be in a K-pop group and then he, when he stopped doing that, he kind of like formed his own like um, label with his friends and just collaborated and like made music and stuff. He's like a singer, songwriter. He is very open about his struggles with mental health. And as a person who also struggles with mental health, I'm able to like relate to some of the stuff that he talks about. I like the ability he has to just channel what he's feeling into his music and just like get it out, you know? Like it fascinates me because sometimes it's just so easy to fall into that hole of like misery and just like, like, you know, like I'm just, I'm just here. Like, you know, like it's so easy to drown in that. And I see that despite the fact that he does struggle with certain things, like he's able to, at the end of the day, like pull through. I just kind of keep everything like very deep in my mind. And I want to be able to get it out because it's very cathartic for me to create something when I feel like shit. I used to paint a lot. Um, I've slowly stopped. I don't know why I just kind of did but sometimes I would paint when I paint or draw when I was under an extreme amount of uh, emotional distress and it'd be times where like I paint something people would be like, oh, this is so cool And I was like, I can't look at that shit You know, like I can't look at that shit because all I think about was how miserable I was in the moment but I want to be able to create something 
and not feel like that like just kind of like let it out and just so I'm trying to learn how to channel my emotions and like both my highs and my lows I asked him if when he performed like when he performs a song like so beautiful which I know he wrote during a low do you go back to that low or do you channel the low and we got into like this whole conversation on how like that was his reality at one point I'm like no yeah it's because I get it because like right now that you don't feel like that it's so easy to just be like oh my god like at least for me at least for me I'm not gonna talk about him uh, like for me it's easy to just dismiss that as like oh I was just being dumb or I was just being this but like in the moment that was my reality instead of minimizing it and instead of being like, eh, I'm, like I'm just being stupid I was being dumb and emotional I'm able to just kind of like you know I'm able to like accept that that was how I felt in the moment that it's okay to feel like that uh, and that I just as long as I don't get stuck there, you know, so I really get I, I really admire him and overall I just love his music the artistic voice that he conveys in all of his works is just amazing If you haven't seen any of his work, you guys should really check out the music video Friday so beautiful nerves No blueberry like the visuals like you you get into his mind as best as one can, you know this is like a joke between my sister and I. We're like, oh yeah, Theo Ian, oh yeah, Compa Ian, or Theo Ian. So yeah, it's like the, the cool uncle that does super cool, crazy shit with his friends. That's kind of how I see him. Next person is CL or Chedin. She is in the girl group 21 until I believe like 2017. That like th this whole thing happened is insane. Something I really love about her is just like the absolute confidence and swagger. She just kind of like oozes. Like she just she's just dripping in swagger. She she seems so confident in like everything she does. Like she seems like such a badass. And I'm just kind of like, bro, I want to be able to have that confidence. I want to be able to carry myself with that finesse at some point. But by the way, this is what I wrote in my notes. Quote, not afraid of doing her own thing. Ya la chingada con los que critiquen. So basically, she's not scared of doing her own thing. And then if you're here to criticize and talk shit on her, it's like, fuck you. I don't care. And I love that about her. I think she's so cool. Once again, super freaking talented. Y'all should hear her music. Like, some of my favorite tracks from her latest album, Alpha. Hua. Oh my god. Hua. I fucking love that song. Hua. Amazing. Tai Cherry. Five star, don't even freaking talk to me. That song, oh my goodness. Another thing is that she created a song called Wish You Were Here and it's dedicated to her mom because her mother passed away a few years ago. And the lyrics are just so beautiful. I can't even imagine the type of pain that she must have been in when that happened. And I don't want to have to imagine what that's gonna what that's gonna be like. And to be able to like not stay in that and be able to turn her grief into a really beautiful reminder of her mom and be able to appreciate the person that she had with her. Be like, it's just, I, I love that. Because something I don't like about like our culture or Western culture or whatever culture, the popular culture, is that when somebody dies, everyone's just fucking miserable. Like, I get it, I get it, it hurts. I, I totally get it, it fucking hurts. But god damn, why does the misery have to continue? Once again, I'm just talking about my own perspective. That's it. This is just my point of view. This is the way that I see things. But like, why would you just sit there and be miserable with like the with the body of the person? Like, that's not the person. The body isn't the person. This isn't me. This is me. Whatever's in my mind is me. Whatever's in here is me. Not this. So I just, I don't get the point of just being there and being miserable and being like, Ugh. like, why not celebrate the person? Why not celebrate who they were? One of the lyrics is, what is it like where you're at now? You know, like in after like whatever you choose to believe in, it's just kind of like, she's just talking to her. She's just having a conversation with her. Like, I miss you. I, I miss having you here with me. I wonder what you're looking at now. Like, what's your life like? Do you miss me? Like, you know, she's just, she's just having a conversation. And I just think it's really, really beautiful how she was able to just convey that into the song. It makes it such a beautiful song. And that's something that I really admire about her and how resilient she is because she's been through a lot of shit that I know of publicly from like the things that have come out and all and all of this stuff. Her ability to not like retreat into the pain and not let it just drown her out is something that I really admire because that's something that I need to work on. I need to work on not falling and like just staying there. I need to be able to 
get myself out even though it's okay to feel like that it's not okay to stay there so that is that's also another thing back like that i was talking with about ian it's a thing that i really admire like this ability to just just like have it experience it and either move on from it or create something out of it you know it's kind of like how i see chetty and i just kind of see her as as a cool tia i see her as, as the cool aunt the cool tia that's just out there doing her thing confident as hell capable as hell she's able to handle her shit <laughs> that's that's her okay so this one snow the product <laughs> I got her down as La Tia Snow. Snow understands the dynamics that go on in a Hispanic family. And I know that generational trauma isn't exclusive to Hispanics, but goddamn, she understands so many ins and outs of like the particular type of shit that goes down. And the particular type of hypocrisy you be seeing sometimes. And I love how she's able to confront that. I love how she exposes it. And she just kind of like lays the cards on the table. Like, this is the situation. What are we going to do about it? And what is my source? Her song, Que Oso. That song, oh my goodness, it, it is my Bible. That song is... <laughs> the video and the like the lyrics themselves, crazy. Like, I read them hell. I was like, oh my God, I got to learn the song so I can do a karaoke every single time. She is an independent artist. I know she was signed to a label for a couple of years, but you know how labels be labeling and they shelved her. So she's like, what the fuck? How do you have Snow the product in your roster and you fucking shelve her? Like, estas loco? Que oso, bitch. So she's an independent artist and I really admire how she's able to navigate the game on her own. Not really because like she has her team, you know, she, she made her team. She chose her family. She chose the people that she's working around. And you know, if they pass the vibe check to work with her, then cool. That's all she needs. I hope she's doing awesome. I hope she does awesome. She's amazing. If y'all haven't heard of her, y'all gotta check her out. Bajala, que oso, avioncito. The quarantine song that she released. Fuck, I'm, like the name is slipping my mind. Visa Rap 39, session 39. Y'all, if y'all have not heard Snow the Product, that's your introduction. Visa Rap 39 is it, okay? I love how she is able to confront generational trauma and how she doesn't she doesn't want to like keep it buried under the tapete you know she don't want to sweep it under the rug like it's been done so many times before she's down and she's open to talk about it which normalizes it which helps people realize like hey you know what maybe these things were not it like we should talk about it and you know what i greatly admire that because i don't like the silence i don't like the just get over it like Things need to be talked about. We need to we need to like make shit better for the future instead of just living and recycling these shitty habits. You know what I mean? She comes from a generation before me. So that means that the parents that she had to deal with were very different from mine, like generational wise. Like from what she has said, it was tough. It was not easy. I admire how she's able to bring these things back up and process them. And she does her best to be the best parent that she can to her son which is just awesome. I love seeing that. And another like little sprinkle is that I love how she remixes between English and Spanish because my sister and I do that shit all the time. So my regular speech is a hybrid of Spanish and English because that's just kind of how it is. And I love being able to see that in other people where I'm like, okay, I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one, but not seeing it, it just don't really exist, you know? So I love being able to see someone who speaks like me. I love being able to see someone who gets a lot of shit that I get. And I'm just, it's just, it's so cool. It's And also, I, like, all the rappers that I listen to just rap in English. I, I had never been actually, like, exposed to anybody that rapped in Spanish. I like talking fast. And if it rhymes, bet. Like, I love memorizing raps. Whether it's Nicki Minaj or Tupac or Suga. Like, I just, I love raps and, like, the faster the better. I just, I can't get to Eminem's level of fast. Like, it's just, it's too much. I'll trip on my own tongue. But, like, I love rap. So, being able to hear someone's flow and it's in Spanish and it's, this woman got bars. Like, I love that. It's so sick. So, like I said, she's an independent artist. She's in this grind on her own. N not really, but, like, you know what I mean? I really admire that and I look up to her for that reason because I'm like, that is so cool. Keep doing what you're doing. You're inspiring me. <laughs> like, I was literally joking around with my parents. I was like, I want to do a song with Snow the Product someday. That would be fucking crazy. And it's going to happen. I don't know if it'll happen, but that's one of my dreams. And on to the last one. Becky G. 
I see Becky G as the cool prima that, like, I'm just kind of, like, living vicariously through. Like, she's the cool cousin that she's just, like, doing out there, doing crazy shit, crazy fun shit with her music, traveling, doing all this stuff. Like, she's living the good life. She li she living what seems to be a really fun, chaotic-ass, crazy-ass fun life, you know, just doing her thing in the music industry. So, Becky G was the first singer, artist, etc. that I knew that actually, like, switched over from English to Spanish. And I... I freaking love that like Spanish is my first language Spanish is my native language and I really want to be able to like create songs and like be able to create stuff and embrace my language I always cheer for her to do her best I always cheer for her and her successes like like I said I'm a casual listener you know I'm not like always there but like I look up to her I think she's I think she's cool I want to be able to make my own music in Spanish someday or something I don't I don't really know so yeah I think she's I think she's really cool with these last two I just like I love my Mexican queen like I love being able to have somebody where it's like yeah when I see people that are like me I'm just kind of like oh that's so cool like that's so cool I could do that <laughs> you know so yeah I just I think that's really cool so yeah that's just kind of how I see her like I just see her as like the cool cousin that's out here doing shit making money moves you know so I that that's just kind of how I see her that's what she looks like in my eyes she's she's really cool those are the five people that I that I decided to share my uh, parasocial relationship with um I kind of wanted to do one about like BTS like I got a whole separate ass relationship with all these motherfuckers they all inspire me in completely different things so i'd have to make a whole ass video just on them maybe i don't know i hope you guys enjoyed this video of me just like going through like my parasocial relationships or whatever let me know if you guys want to see more or i don't know i don't know bro i really don't so yeah thank you guys so much for watching here's some other videos y'all can check out if you want and i'll see you next time bye